I can't, you know what, why don't you just start by giving me the rundown, you know, what you can tell me about, you know, what happened and what had your crews you know, responding over the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So um, our crew was already, uh, actually, they got called out on a, another uh, operational mission. Um, whenever we're out flying, we're always monitoring the emergency frequencies. We have the ability on our aircraft. Um, so it just so happened that uh, they got stood down from one, one mission. So they were uh, still out in the vicinity of Beaver Island. Uh, and then we had an emergency beacon go off. Um, so we get an indication in the cockpit. Uh, what they did is we have a direction finder. It's a needle that will point in the direction of where the emergency beacon's going off. And it led them to Beaver Island. Uh, so once they got there, they saw that there was already responders on scene. Uh, they were able to land and then they assisted uh, the local EMS there. So they were already in the air when, uh, when something like this happened. So um, they were able to respond very quickly. And again, very fortuitous, um, you know, so tell me, tell me about what they, what they found when they got there. So first responders were, you know, already on the scene um, and they land, what do, what do they do and what kind of happens from there? Well, actually, I can't speak to what exactly happened once they sure. landed. Um, I know that they tried to assist uh, local EMS uh, in every way possible. Um, obviously, there was uh, some sort of transport, but I can't speak to the nature or who was transported, but they were transported to Petoskey, um, or uh, I believe it was Petoskey, but uh, yeah. And so once they arrived on scene, like I said, I, I'm not sure what all happened. I know we have uh, one of our rescue swimmers was in the back um, because our duty crews always fly with rescue swimmers. So I'm sure they went out and assessed the scene and just supported the local EMS in any way possible. Sure, absolutely. Now, I do understand from like other media reports that it was, uh, you know, a, a gentleman and an 11 year old girl uh, who were who were transported. Can you can you confirm that or? I, I can't at this time. OK, OK. Um, What's sort of your reaction to, uh, to to a scene like this? I mean, one, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure a few things can kind of prepare you for, um, you know, a tragedy like that, and and you know, uh, being being an eyewitness to a tragedy like that. But um, yeah, what what kind of occurs to you? Uh, gosh, for something like that, I mean, it's we've all seen the news reports, so it's a terrible scene to arrive upon. Um, this is. Unfortunately, stuff that we are trained to respond to, um, and so I have every confidence that uh, the crew, um, the crew in the back, everybody who was involved, you know, did everything they could. Uh, and remember, we're, we've got to be professional about it, so we've, we've uh, got to maintain our composure, even though there may be many emotions involved. Um, so uh, that, that's about all I can say to that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So where, where does the investigation go from here? So obviously we have the FAA and the NTSB. What role are you guys going to be playing, in, you know, if any, uh, in, in that investigation? Uh, that's yet to be determined right now. So okay. we, um, we have, I haven't received anything yet from the FAA, so I, I, can't, I can't speak to that. Okay, but I, I would imagine you, you know, on some level expect to, uh, you know, either furnish details or, or, or something like that. Uh, that could definitely come out in the course of the investigation. If that's the case, we'll, we will cooperate fully with, uh, with anybody who you know, requests any information from us. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, is there anything at all you would care to add? Anything, uh, any other, I guess, light you could sort of shine on this situation and, and uh, you know, what happened? Um, I don't think there's anything else right now at this time to add. Um, I know information probably comes out and becomes available. More, more light will be shed on the situation. But as of right now, that's about... That's about all we know and all we can disclose at this time. Sure, of course. Um, so, so getting more into you know kind of what you've already told me, but um, so you said they were out on what it was a training mission, correct? Well, so they actually were called out on an operational mission uh, earlier um, that eventually got stood down uh, while they were in flight already, though. So they were already flying around in the area. Uh, and like I said, every time we're, we're out flying, um, we have the capability to monitor uh, multiple emergency frequencies, which we are uh, constantly doing. Um, for such cases as this. I mean, this isn't the first time we've had a case when we're already in the air. So we always constantly monitor uh, all, all sorts of emergency frequencies, whether they're uh, maritime emergency frequencies, uh, aircraft emergency frequencies, things like that. So there was an emergency beacon that went off um, and that's why we were able to, to quickly respond because we heard that, so. Sure, sure. And I, I don't know if you're able to speak to this, but I mean, you know, how rare is it that you're, and I'm sure, you, you know, you're out there and you, you, you know, get a call or, you know, are, are, are diverted somewhere based on, you know, a beacon or something. But how rare is it that, um, you know, you're physically like so close to, you know, one of these scenes and can literally just sort of drop in and render, you know, potentially life. 
I mean, I, I will say it's very, very rare. Um, it's to have something like that happen so close to where you're flying. I mean, it's, it's it, like the probabilities aren't, aren't extremely high. It's normally when you're getting a call, it's going to be something like we cover a whole area all the way up from, you know, Superior down to Chicago. So the fact that you were out flying in the area right where something happened, I would say it's very rare. Um, it has happened before, uh, which, like I said, is also very fortuitous when you're in the air and you get an emergency call and you're like, oh, right there, and you can immediately uh, respond to it. Um, so things like that, we're glad that we're already able to respond so quickly. Um, but yeah, it's it's not it's not common. I can, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, you know, I think that that about covers my basis, unless there's you know anything at all you, you care to say or. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure your thoughts are, are with the victims as well. But. Absolutely. Our, our thoughts and prayers are with the, the families and the victims. So.